Hello there. Um, in this video I'm going to talk about the different types of blender curves that are available and Fluid Designer for 3D Printing, which is the software that I've used to create all of these objects here, uses blender curves. Um, and what I'm going to talk about are how I use blender curves to create parametric smart objects such as the ones shown, shown here. Now if you want to know how to create any of these objects, if you uh, just Google on YouTube Fluid Designer, you should be able to find out how to create this pendant, these uh, Hindi font coasters, this tangentoidal crown bracelet, or these wire dishes. <coughs> so um, I use Fluid Designer for 3D printing, and in the background of Fluid Designer is Blender. So those of you who are familiar with Blender, all of the Blender functionality is available in Fluid Designer for 3D printing. Um, but I use Fluid Designer because of this drag and drop interface and because um, I want to create smart objects. Now what do I mean by a smart object? Well this is a, a default uh, bracelet, it's uh, got an inner diameter of 65 millimeters and uh, what's smart about this is the thickness of that is one millimeter by 10 millimeters deep and I can just change that to any size that I want and be confident that um, it's going to give me the real size when I 3D print it and that's what I'm actually interested in. And if I wanted to change the inner diameter I could do that and again apply a different cross section. So um, what, what's actually going on here? Well first of all I'm going to uh, just uh, hide this object uh, and just uh, delete the bevel object from it and um, I'm going to uh, say in this video I'm going to talk about the different sort of curves that are available in in Blender and available in this application Fluid Designer for 3D printing. Now if I um, open up a Bezier curve and place it on the screen there and if I just open up the toolbox panel here um, the size of this object at the moment is is just one millimeter and if I change the value in here to 10 millimeters that will reset the size of that uh, Bezier curve and uh, if I go to bevel object now and apply a cross section of say one by one uh, and just fill in the end cap there uh, I can then set one by two and if I look in the main information icon you can see that the Z dimension is two millimeters here and I can set one by three. So again in the main information icon this value is three millimeters thick and that's the kind of thing I want to do for 3D printing but however there are problems here. If I now scale this object so I'll just switch on screencast keys here so if I press the S key on the keyboard to scale and if I enter in 0.5 and scale it down by a factor of 50% uh, you see that um, these vector values are, are set here now at 0.5 and my height is no longer 3 millimeters as described here. This cross section should be 1 across and 3 millimeters deep. That isn't the case anymore. Now if I do control A and apply the scale nothing happens. This still stays 1.5 millimeters deep. If I just go back to um, my uh, bracelet that I started off with, that's 1 by 10. If I just set that one to 1 by 3, so that's 3 millimeters deep now. If I do um, S on the keyboard here, I'll just open the toolbox again. If I hit S on the keyboard here and enter 0 0.5 and enter, you'll see there's my resize vectors at 0 0.5. At the moment that's 1.5 millimeters thick but this is 1 by 3 so it should be 3 millimeters deep. When I do control A and apply the scale this time and when I do that these get set back to 1. Control A and apply the scale. Notice that my thickness comes back and this is what I call a parametric smart object. Whenever I scale, so I'll do it again, Whenever I do control A and apply that scale, 
my real size dimensions here are reapplied and that's what I want if I'm 3D printing. So the Bezier curve doesn't do that. So again if I just hide that object um, I'm just trying to keep all of these um, cross sections onto my workspace at the moment so that's why I'm just hiding that one. So similarly if I add a Bezier circle and uh, if I set the radius for that at 10 millimeters, the same thing is going to happen here. So if I make this say three millimeters deep, that's okay at the moment. The Z dimension is three millimeters, but if I scale it, so S on the keyboard to scale 0.5 uh, and do control A and apply the scale, nothing happens. I don't get my three millimeters thickness back again. But I do if I'm working with a NURBS um, object. So if I just uh, if I just delete that one again, if I add a NURBS circle this time and set it to 10 millimeters uh, and set my thickness again down at three millimeters there, so you can see the Z value is three. If I scale this one down, I'll just switch screencast keys on again, S for scale, if I type 0.5 and scale that down, you can see my vector 0.5 here, but when I apply this and reset it back to 1, so if I do Control A on the keyboard and apply the scale back again, I get my thickness back. And that's what I want if I'm 3D printing. I want to know that the cross-section of this object is as described here and I'll just show you it again to show that it does work so that's one by eight so you can see we're eight millimeters thick so if I scale it up it doesn't matter what I scale it to uh, if I do control a and apply the scale there's my eight millimeters depth again so my values here are absolute the only thing you've got to do is you've actually got to remember to do control a and apply the scale whenever you scale curves. So you know, over in the outliner panel here you can see all the objects on the uh, workspace that are uh, curves and as you can see they are all pretty much curves. I don't tend to work with meshes until the very last minute and in fact I always save my files as curves. The only time I convert to mesh is when I export it either as an OBJ or as an SDL file and that will change it to a mesh at that point. It keeps my file sizes small, typically one megabyte instead of 40, 60, 80 with meshes um, when I'm creating 3D printable objects but it also allows me to keep things as curves. Um, now there is another type of curve that's available in uh, Blender in Fluid Designer for 3D printing. If I just press X on the keyboard and just delete that one. If I add a um, Bezier circle again, so it's 10 millimeters, um, there is another option that you can use. And to, to change this from a Bezier curve to a NURBS curve, or the other option, which is a polyline, I need to switch on the switch to the fluid sorry switch to the blender menu so if I click on blender up here and uh, press the tab key on the keyboard to go into edit mode um, one of the things that I can do and all the control points are highlighted I'll just double check that all the control points are highlighted if I change my spline type if I change it I started off with a bezier curve for this one that's what I added if I change it to a polyline curve, notice I lose my roundness. Um, but if I press the tab key to come out of edit mode, if I apply a one millimeter by three millimeter object um, cross section to that, so I've got three millimeters depth again. If I scale this down, and I'll do scale 0 0.5. Okay, so my my depth should be three millimeters. Um, it's actually 1.5, but if I do control A and apply that scale, notice I do get my 3 millimeters back, like I do with the NURBS curves. 
There is, however, a downside to using uh, polylines, and that is if I go, um, I'll just need to switch back to uh, fluid designer menu. If I just go to view and top view, um, this is telling me that uh, my bevel object should be one millimeter across here. Now, it is actually, I know for a fact it's going to be a little bit bigger than that because that's my setting for, for this. It, although it says one millimeter here, um, I have got it set. If you just look, you'll see that it's actually slightly curved, that it's not an absolute square. Um, that's okay for 3D printing because you get nice smooth objects. Um, but if I measure this, that value there isn't isn't one millimeter as it should be because the way that polylines work are that whatever the size is here this is the size in the corner now it is slightly larger than that on mine but that's because of the bevel object and i can just demonstrate it a little bit better if i go into edit mode and if I just select those two control points there and subdivide, you can see what's happening in the middle here. My thickness increase there, this is actually the value in the cross section here. And if I actually just take that control point there, and uh, I'll just um, switch the snap off, and just grab it and... Oops, I've got more points selected than I want. I just want that middle point there. If I just press G and move that point out, notice what happens to the thickness at where the control point is. It, this stays at the one millimeter here, the diagonal distance, but this thins out. So if I measure it, you can see that this is well below a millimeter now. Now again, from the point of view of 3D printing, that's not what I want. I want a uniform cross-section. I want to know what the thickness of my objects is all the time. So, with, um, with polyline curves in uh, Blender, in Fluid Designer, you can, when you scale it, so if I just do it again, you can, when you scale it and do Control a and apply the scale, the scale factor will set this back to this value but you've got an issue that the thickness isn't correct here. So this is why I always use NURBS curves. So these objects here, this basic um, bracelet is a NURBS curve and uh, all the other objects that I use are also NURBS curves. So if I just scroll down and um, I'll just look for a Celtic knot pattern. Where are we? Yeah, so if I look for this Celtic knot bracelet here. Okay, so uh, this is the sort of thing that I do. Um, if I just set my count back to one and you can see what the basic object is. Okay, so this object is um, a NURBS curve and uh, if I change the cross section, so it's one millimeter diameter at the moment, so it's a rounded cross section at the moment. If I change it to 1.5, um, I've actually changed it to a square section there rather than rounded. Uh, yeah, if I change it to a rounded 1.5, you see the cross section changes, or two. Okay, and. Um, if I um, scale that, press S on the keyboard to scale it. I'll just switch on the screencast keys again. If I scale that up and do Control A and apply the scale, notice my thickness is reapplied because this is a NURBS curve. It's not a Bezier, it's not a poly, it's a NURBS curve. And so from the point of view of 3D printing, I will always know what the diameter, what the thickness is of this object. Um, so going back to the opening screen there, these are all created using NURBS curves and uh, the advantage of using these NURBS curves and parametric smart objects, if we go back to uh, this um, Celtic knot pattern, 
when you replicate objects like this even when they overlap and intersect each other the beauty about using NURB curves is that when you actually um, save this as an OBJ or an STL file your, um, if you use um, Netfab Basic as I use or if you upload to Shapeways as I do then you won't have any problems with self-intersecting faces and you can end up with some very nice easily produced and you can manage the thickness of the objects by setting the appropriate cross section that you want here and you can always change it at any time that you want so if you've got really uh, sophisticated printing equipment you can go down to uh, 0.8 of a millimeter and you can change the appearance of your uh, bracelet in this case very simply and very easily so this video was about using uh, blender or as I use it fluid designer for 3d printing using parametric smart objects and using nerves curves um, one final thing that I should say is that um, there are, I have created a number of additional curves, spirals, uh, Ar um, Archytas, uh, Basin, Borromean, Celtic Knot, Wire Dish, and all of these all use NURBS because they're all based on the original Blender Taurus Knot uh, command. So um, you can use, uh, create a, a Wire Dish there, for example and uh, you can change the parameters of it so you can change the scale change the height just zoom back out and just open up the uh, panel over here it's a bit large i've made it a bit too high whoops i'm going the wrong way just bring it back down um, change the p-values now these are all using nerves curves now at the moment the thickness of this is one millimeter because I've set the bevel at uh, 0 0.05 but um, there are no bevel objects in here but if I just append them if I just go to file and append and so I just go up through my menu system and uh, I want my uh, so I'm going to do a rectangular cross section here so if I just append all of these cross sections from my system Okay, so here's a, a wire mesh. It's created using NURBS curve. If I change the thickness of this, so that's one by one now, one by two, one by three, so you can see the depth there changing. And the beauty about this object is that it is going to be 3D printable after you run it through Netfab Basic because it's created using parametric equations in the same way that um, the Taurus Knot command is in, in Blender and Fluid Designer for 3D printing. So if you want um, these curve objects, all you need to do is to go on the, to the internet, um, go to our, my website at fluiddesigner.co.uk, go to the download page, go to the download page and if you just scroll down, um, you'll see curve add-ons for Fluid Designer or for Blender. And uh, you just install them in the normal way um, into Blender. Okay, so uh, that's it for uh, this video. Um, as I say, if you want to produce objects like this easily and to control the thickness, try using NURBS. There is, of course, a downside to it that uh, the faces can uh, the mesh can increase and dramatically increase but as long as you keep that under control you can do some really amazing things very quickly and very easily and they will be 3d printable objects at the end of the day so that's it for this video good luck